What's going on guys? Today we're going to look at how we can use Node's async local storage module to manage state for a single request and be able to set values and retrieve them for the lifetime of a web request or any other asynchronous duration. It's going to be very similar to thread local storage in other languages. Now of course Node.js is single threaded so we need a way to accomplish that and we can use callbacks instead. So it makes it really easy to track and log data throughout the whole application for a single request. Let's go ahead and see how we can really easily implement this with async local storage in Node.js and make our code a lot cleaner. I'll see you there. Really quick, before we jump in, if you're interested in this content and you'd like to see more around Nest.js and particularly building microservices, real world microservices with Nest.js, that go beyond the documentation and show you how to really build a real application, deploy it, and learn everything you need to know to build them from the ground up, check out my Udemy course for Nest.js microservices. You'll find a discount link in the description. Thank you so much, and let's jump right into the video. So let's go ahead and get started. I'm gonna use the Nest CLI to generate a new project by running Nest New. And then I'll go ahead and call this Nest.js ALS for async local storage. And I'll use PNPM as my package manager and allow the project to get set up. So once we have our project set up, I'll go ahead and CD into it. So back in the terminal, I'll run PNPM start dev to go ahead and start our development server. And you can see our Nest application has successfully started. So we know out of the box, we have our main.ts file that's going to start our application and listen on port 3000 for incoming traffic. And by default, we have our single app controller that has one get route exposed. So we can open up Postman and send a request to our app and make sure this is working properly. All right, so in Postman, I'll launch a request at localhost 3000, 3003 and get back the hello world response from our app controller. So our app is starting up. Now let's go ahead and set up async local storage so that we can set up a common store of data for each and every incoming request and access this data anywhere in our application. So to start off, we're gonna go ahead and create a new module just for async local storage. So in our source directory, I'll create a new ALS folder then we can create a new als.module and export a class called als module. And we'll go ahead and decorate this with the at module decorator from Nest.js common. And in this module, we're gonna set up a providers array where we set up a single provider and that provider is gonna be our shared instance of the async local storage. So let's go ahead and do that. We'll set up a provider with an object so we'll use the provide property to provide the async local storage class that we automatically import from Node.js in the async hooks module. And then we will use a use value to go ahead and provide a default value for this async local storage, which in our case is gonna be just a new async local storage. So we'll go ahead and call this and this will create a new async local storage for our, our entire application to share so that we can set values and retrieve them on this async local storage. So now that we have the ALS module, let's go ahead and import it into our app.module. So I'll add the ALS module to our imports array. So next up, I wanna create a common middleware function that will get called globally before each and every route in our system. And essentially what it's gonna do is it's gonna make sure that we execute the run function on our async local storage, which is gonna create essentially a new thread you can think of. It's not a real thread in the sense, since Node.js is single threaded, but it's gonna create a unique data store just for any values that are set or accessed in that callback chain. So this will be a bit more clear once we get started. Let's go ahead and generate new middleware by opening up a terminal and running nest generate middleware and we'll call this ALS. 
So you can see that this has automatically created the ALS middleware in the ALS folder. And we can see we have the injectable middleware that's implementing the Nest.js middleware. And we have our middleware use function already all set up. So now let's go ahead and set up our async local storage for each and every request that comes into our system. The first thing we're going to want to do is set up a constructor where we'll inject the async local storage that we provided in our ALS module. So let's go ahead and do this by having a new private read-only ALS variable set equal to async local storage. Now you can see here that this is going to require a type argument. So we'll go ahead and provide any for now because in our app, we'll let any values be set or get on this async local storage. Okay, so now let's get rid of the next function. So the next function in the middleware is going to proceed with the request lifecycle and move on to the route handler or any other middleware or interceptors we have set up. However, we don't want to execute next immediately. We want to call next in the scope of the async local storage. So what I mean by this is we can call this.als.run to run a function inside of async local storage and have all values get or set in that async local storage be scoped just to that set of callbacks. So we'll call run and you can see here we take two parameters. The first is going to be the store, which is the data we actually get or set, and then the callback. So let's go ahead and provide an empty object for our store, which is just going to be a way that we can set or get any property we want on this object in the scope of a single request. And then we're going to provide the callback function, which is going to be the quote unquote thread that all the values are get or set on this object. So this is going to work because we now call the next function. So what this does is it executes the next function, which in our case is going to be the entire request lifecycle inside of this callback function we're providing to async local storage. And remember what I said earlier, any values get or set with inside of this callback function are only going to apply to this one object or this store here. So our store is going to be scoped only for this single request. Now I want to go ahead and provide some default values for our store here. So I'll go ahead and create a dedicated store object and let's go ahead and provide a couple of values. So let's say we want to provide a correlation key that will set equal to request headers and pull off the X correlation key header that a user can supply. Let's say we also want to get the authentication header. So we'll get the request headers and then get the authentication header. And finally, let's say we have a user ID that can also be passed as a header. And of course, you can provide any properties you want initially on this store. It can be anything on the request authentication data. And you can also set properties at any time that will always be accessible on this object. So let's go ahead and continue by populating the X user ID header. So now that we have this default store, let's provide this instead of the empty object so that we can access these values later on in our service. So now to actually apply this middleware globally, let's go back to the app.module where we can go ahead and do this. So we'll go ahead and implement the nest module from nest.js common, which will enforce us to supply a configure method where we can apply middleware using this consumer parameter. So we'll call it consumer.apply and then tell it the middleware we want to apply. In our case, we want the ALS middleware to be applied. And then we'll specify the routes we want it to be applied to. So in our case, we'll use a wildcard to select each and every route in our system because we always want this async local storage to run. Finally, let's go into our app service where we can actually get access to the async local storage store and access the values on it. So to do this, let's go ahead and add a constructor where we'll inject the private read-only ALS of type async local storage. 
and of course provide the type parameter of any. Now for this to actually be injected properly, we need to make sure we go to the ALS module and add an exports array where we actually export the async local storage provider that we've set up here. So now back in the app service, let's actually return this.als.getStore where we'll be able to actually get the current store on the current request, which we know from the ALS middleware is going to be the store that we set up here and provided to the current request in this callback function after we called next. So you can think of it like this, the ALS middleware gets hit, we provide the store, call next, and inside of that callback, because we're calling the next function, the app service get hello route is also going to get called within that callback. So we have access to the store, we can get the values, we can set even more values, and we don't need to continue passing all these parameters around in our function and be polluting all of our function parameters. Instead, we can simply call get store on this async local storage. So let's go ahead and try it out by going into Postman and I'll make sure I supply some of these headers that we're using to create the store. So I'll add an X correlation key header, one, two, three. I'll add an authentication, some key, and we'll have the X user ID be 951. So now if we execute this request, you can see we are returning back the store for the current request. There's one problem here, the authentication key isn't provided, and that's because we need to actually pull the lowercase authentication off of the header. And now if we send the same request, you can see we're getting the entire store returned back to us. So you might be wondering why this is useful. Well, think of it like this. Originally, to get access to these values on the store from the request, like authentication, correlation key, user ID, we'd have to pull them off of the incoming request in the app controller using something like the request decorator, right? We'd get access to the request from Express, and then we'd have to pass this information down to the app service get hello function by calling request.headers and pulling off all of the headers like we did before. And you can imagine this only gets worse, right? If we have another function that get hello calls that needs access to these variables, we'd have to pass them again. Instead, ALS allows us to bypass this problem because we can inject this store anywhere in our application, get access to these values that are only scoped to the current request and make our code a lot cleaner. So I hope you've learned a lot in this video and you see how we can use async local storage to easily store and retrieve data throughout the lifetime of a request and do it very easily, very similar to how you would do it in thread-based applications. However, in Node.js, we can use callbacks to achieve something very similar. So thanks so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next one.